Alright, so in this lesson I'm going to talk about RAM memory. Now, unlike data that is stored on disk, RAM memory exists only while your computer is turned on. As soon as you turn off your computer, everything that was in RAM is gone. That is why, if you were working on a document and forgot to save, you cannot get it back. When you run a program on your computer, that program makes use of your RAM to store and retrieve all sorts of data. For example, if you load a document in a word processor, the contents of that document can be loaded into your RAM and then the program can manipulate the document as you edit it. When you are satisfied, you tell the program to save your document and this causes your program to take what was in RAM and store it onto your disk for permanent storage. Now if you have 4 gigabytes of RAM that means that you have roughly 4 billion bytes or 4 billion sets of 8 ones and zeros available for any program that is running on your computer. Your operating system is responsible for ensuring that each program has enough RAM to use and for making sure that the RAM in use by one program cannot be used by another program. Every one of those sequences of eight ones and zeros has an address. The addresses start at zero and work their way up to four billion. The exact way that this is done is more complex, but for right now, this is a simple enough description. You, as the programmer, will need to store data at a specific address in memory, and then you need to be able to know where it is for later on. Now, let's say that I have a string of text. Okay, so here I have a string of text that says, Hello Reddit. And I put that into RAM. If I want to later on display that text, first of all, I have to retrieve it from RAM. That means I must know where in RAM the string of text was put. Or in other words, I have to know what address this string of text is located in memory. Now, it would be quite tedious if I had to remember some enormous number as an address in memory every time I needed to store something. This leads us to the next role that a programming language has. All programming languages have functionality that keeps track of these addresses for us, and allows us to use plain English names in place of addresses, as well as for the contents of what we store. Now, here is an example of this in action. So let's imagine we have the string of text that says, Hello Reddit, and our programming language puts it somewhere in memory between 0 and 4 billion. We have no idea where the programming language decided to put our data. But more importantly, even if we did know, it would be very tedious to try to keep track of those numbers. So what a programming language can do is basically allow you to use a simple word and that word becomes equivalent for the address in memory. So, in a programming language, what I would probably write would be something like this. I would come up with a simple, easy to remember name, like Reddit text. And I would say, Reddit text equals hello Reddit, in quotes. That's really all I have to do as a programmer. I don't have to worry about everything that goes on behind the scenes although I do have to understand it. 
So when I, as a programmer, write Reddit text equals hello Reddit, here's what happens. The text, the actual data, hello Reddit, gets placed into memory somewhere at some address and I don't know where. But for the sake of this lesson, let's imagine it's at this crazy address. Then what happens is the programming language will automatically understand whenever it sees Reddit text, it will understand what I am referring to is the actual place in memory that the data is stored. So this is what I want you to remember. Later on, if I want to use this same text somewhere in the program, all I have to do is say, for example, print Reddit text. And when I say print Reddit text, the programming language will immediately know that I'm referring to this specific data. So keep in mind that the programming language is actually keeping track of two different things. Number one, it's keeping track of the actual memory address and the name that corresponds to that memory address of where the data is actually stored. And number two, it is keeping track of the data itself that's stored at that particular location in memory. All right, now I know that may have been a bit confusing. Don't worry. We're just covering the basics right now. As long as you understand that data you create inside of your program can be stored in RAM at a specific address, and as long as you understand that your programming language does the work of keeping track of those addresses for you, then you're doing just fine.